Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you've been watching this video from. Um, my name is Ida T. This is Eagle Tracker in conversation with Chin on so forth. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, everyone. Yes. Um, so, Chino, so first of all, um, can you just give us a little bit of an introduction? You know, for people that are watching, some of them might not know who you are. Um, I'm a fortune on so I am um, 20. I play for the Chicago Fires in the United States. Mm, nice, nice. And Chino, so um, what position do you play? You say you play for Chicago Fire. What position do you play? Tell us a little bit more about the football side of yourself. I play I play forward. Uh, it wasn't always like that anyways, because I at the younger age I used to play from the from the sides. Oh. Um I played a bit of midfield as well. Um yeah, I think when I started like growing taller or so, so I, I had to like convert fully into into a striker. Though some coaches still use me sometimes as a winger, um, depending on how the game is going. So yeah. Interesting. And I mean, if you can play as a winger and as a striker, then obviously you you must be a threat, you know, to in most football matches. Those are the kind of players that we like. And um, can you t tell me how did you get into um, the professional stream? You know, how did you begin your journey towards becoming a professional player? Obviously, we we all started from like in Africa and Nigeria. We all started from you know the normal street football. Yeah. Then we find academies nearby, not minding if it's registered or not, we just start playing. Yeah. yeah, then, I mean, I played few academies before I got into the prop, which is Red Fire. Mm. Then, um, I think the first country I went to was um, Cyprus. Mm. Though it's not under FIFA, it's, it's, it's not registered. So yeah, I not Cyprus, yeah. Yeah, I played not not in Cyprus, so I played there for a year and a half or two. Oh. Yeah, then I had to come back to Nigeria. Like I came back to the academy. Um, yeah, I spent about eight eight months. Then um, then I moved to Latvia. Yeah, so, yeah everything they're going. So. Oh. And, yeah. and I, I want to ask you if if you were not a footballer, is there anything else that you had in your mind that you wanted to do? I really don't know. I would just probably be, you know, normal Nigerian going to school, maybe uh, trying different sort of businesses and seeing seeing which one. Yeah. Yeah, which one comes out good. Mm. And okay, let me let me now just fast forward to your time in Latvia. Um, I was looking up your stats, you know, in the league. I think in 2019 you scored six goals in 13 games in 2020 you scored 10 goals in 21 games so you went to latvia and you were able to to make your mark there you know how how much of a challenge was it for you you know this young boy growing up in nigeria wanted to play football now playing in, in europe you know how was that for you it's always challenging you don't no matter how small the country is it's always challenging going leaving your comfort zone which is nigeria and yeah. going obviously you have to go there for trial you have to prove yourself because I remember we were three that went there and they kept only two of us. Wow. Yeah, so it was, it was, I wouldn't say it was that difficult, but obviously because of the hard work we've put in, so it, it was kind of um, easy. But the games, the games, obviously, the um, first few games were a bit hard because, I mean, I had good games personally. But the goals didn't come out, didn't come immediately. I think it was my third or fourth game. Mm. I first goal. I got two two goals in that game. So I got I became a big free. Started playing, you know, started getting goals, the goals started coming. I scored six though I wanted more. But that was enough for the stats. So fast forward to the second season, I was I set a target. I was aiming for fifteen to twenty goals. But then um, um, I had an offer from RFS. Then I moved. So I scored four in my in Dalga yeah. field. I scored four in Dalga field. Then I moved to RFS. I was still um, getting my hopes high on getting my reaching my goals, but it didn't it didn't it didn't turn out that way. So playing at the strike, there was a striker there as of then. It was also good. So we were sharing times, and I couldn't like um, get that 15 goals. But 10 was enough to like. 
get me a move. So yeah, it doesn't matter. The yeah. move. And um, I just want to ask how how would you rate um, your overall time in Latvia? How do you think it helped you to improve as a footballer? Uh, I mean, it's um, the the kind of um, you know, cause it's it's Europe. It doesn't matter how small it is. It's Europe, so they they have the ideas. They know how how it is everywhere. Even though they, they don't have like the hundred percent facilities, like you you already sense the idea. They they want you to play. You already know it so far from how they play Germany. Yeah. In the UKs and all, so I think it's it's. I mean, I went there for them to like, pick me up, so I, I I would get a move. Like most Nigerians going there, that's that's. Yeah, I mean, it's a so, stepping stone. It's a stepping stone. So they did that quite well. Yeah. Oh, and um, I guess that that brings me to my next question, which I hinted at earlier. Um, why why MLS? You know, I mean, it's something that, like I said, it's not everybody that moves to this place. Some people, you know, um, the MLS has that stigma. Some people that like, Americans don't know how to play football, you know, all that kind of thing. So what prompted this decision and how did it even come about? Well, while this thing was going on, I think a few games, few games before the end of the season, I was already, you know, agents, you know, that type of the year where agents start to write to you, I have something, I have this, I have that. So there was a few European teams, my... My team, my previous team, wouldn't say as of then because maybe it wasn't coming or something. So uh, they didn't like tell me more. They just only gave me a hint. They said, "Okay, there are a few teams interested." Then um, I think that up fin- semi-final. I started that game. I played really well. So after the game, we lost. So the sporting director came and he said, um, "I would need you to sign something like a mandate, something. Your agent is going to call you real soon." And I said, okay. So in the bus, my agent called me and she she said, um, she was explaining some stuff to me. Then she said, she brought up MLS. And in my head, I'm like, MLS, really? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't having it there because we just played a game and I'm like, MLS, how is that even? I don't, I'm not understanding. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I went home, I sat down, um, I had to think. I mean, with uh, my agent and the uh, people surrounding me. Yeah. So we did a few research. And we noticed, no, even apart from the researches at all, you already sense that um, a few players are leaving the MLS and getting to top leagues. Yeah. Top leagues. So that was something I. I said, okay, I would, I, would, I would grab this opportunity because when you're here, like everyone, the whole world is watching you. you play good here, the whole world is going to see you. So yeah, I think that was part of that was the major reason why I I prompted for I opted for the MLS. So. And, and you know, I mean, of course, for me, I'm excited. Unfortunately, because of this pandemic, people uh, they're not playing football over here in Canada, but yeah. I mean, it'll be nice, you know, to one day maybe when you guys play against Toronto FC when fans are allowed back in the stadium it would be nice to come watch you know i always like to i don't get many opportunities so i like when i have to be able to see nigerian players um up close um and speaking of um players moving from the mls to um top leagues i mean we have even a nigerian american Dario dk is currently playing in Barnsley, and you know he's making a lot of noise over there they might get promoted so of course you know the mls is is a league that can of course lead you to england spain germany france wherever um, my next question is Chicago Fire. You know, so did you know anything about the club before they signed you? Um, because I was looking on transfer market, and I mean, they paid some good money to acquire your your services. So, did you know much about the club, and um, like how much did they did they want you? You know, for them to have paid that much, you know, how much did they also know about you? Well. Um... To be honest, I'm I'm not even gonna lie. I I didn't know about them. I just I just knew Schwansteiger Schwan played somewhere in America. But when oh. I researched and I was like, oh, Schwansteiger played here and and it's Arsenal, then um, Lundberg. I think he played there. he played here as well. Oh. So then I started doing my researches. I 
then I got to know about them. But at first, I did not know about them at all. I just knew about the LA Galaxies because of um, Beckham. Yeah. Um, City yeah. because of of Obafemi Martins and yeah. yeah. And and um, you know, I'm saying, how much interest? Like, so when you first spoke with the club, when you you know, what did they tell you? How much interest did they show in you? Yeah. So after. After I agreed, okay, let's let's see how it goes. I might I might want to move to MLS the the coach put a call through. So we spoke and um he analyzed my game. He obviously they've been watching me, they've been following me, the the, the analysts over here have been like, you know, going following my games and all that. So yeah, he had he had we had a lengthy a lengthy chat was good. So uh, and I was um I was eager to even join. I was more eager to, mm. to join the team after after the chat with the coach. Yeah, and and how has how has life been like for you so far in the United States? I mean, Chicago, you know, popular city, big city. I know, of course, I know the Nigerian community in Chicago is quite large as well. So, how how have you settled in? Ah, uh, settled in quite well. Not being what is indoors, anyways. Though I found a few Nigerian markets where I go to get stuffs. Oh. That's very important, and, <laughs> and uh, it's almost it's it's summer soon. Maybe I will get to like visit a few places because I haven't really been out because of COVID and and the cold. Yeah. Hopefully soon we get vaccines and and everywhere will be will be open. Oh. Okay, and um, looking forward to you know your your first season. Um, you know how 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 was the preseason training like for you? You know, coming into this team, meeting the players, you know, playing under a new coach. How was it like for you? And how how ready are you looking forward to your first game of the season? It wasn't really hard settling in with the players. They are like um, professional players, nice set of guys. Um, the coaches as well, the coaching staffs as well, very friendly. The preseason was hard. It was pretty hard. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, what, was there anything in particular that made it hard? No, the intensity, the the, the running, the programs. Oh. Obviously, it's precision. You have to do that. But I think this is the hardest I've done so far. Because the our coach is is, is European, so most of our trainings are like standard. And so it was it was hard, and it was sunny because we're down in Florida. So. Oh. so Mm, that's 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 nice. I mean, and of course, if if it's not hard, then you're not working enough. I mean, preseason, everybody is is coming back. Some people might be a little bit fat, you know, things like that. So it's trying to get you in, in shape. And um, looking forward to your to your first game. You know, are you how are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you just indifferent? You know, just a cool guy. What's the feeling like? Yeah, it's a bit of everything. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, um, obviously, you have to be nervous because you're you're human, and um, I'm even more excited because we are going to have like a few fans. Mm, mm. I think about twenty five thousand or so. Yeah. So that's 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 something to be excited about. Um, you know, I'm just excited about a new challenge, like something new, a bigger, yeah. all that. So in general, I would say it's a bit of everything. You just jump. Mm. And is there any player, any team in the MLS that you are looking forward to to facing? <laughs> Inter Miami. Mm, Inter Miami. I mean, I, I can understand that new team, flashy ownership, flashy club, everything. You know, <laughs> be nice. And I think they, they have Higuain as well and a few other interesting players. So yes, that that would be a good one. And just to point out, I don't know if you know this, but I mean. We also have a few other Nigerians in the MLS. Um, Ibrahim Sunusi signed for um, CF Montreal. You know, yeah. they are going to play. Um, if Mayachi Achara plays for Toronto FC, I don't know. He was injured last season. I don't know if he's fully recovered, but he plays for Toronto FC, so he will probably be around sometime this season. And we have a few other people that are half Nigerian, half Canadian, half American. So it will be interesting to see. Um, have you set any? personal goals for yourself you know looking forward to it, or are you just taking it as it comes unlike every other seasons this year i haven't like set a proper goal 
um, I'm, I'm just aiming at um, getting into the team fully because obviously they have like uh, obviously we have a good striker here so like getting into the team for us fully you know where the coaches where the coaches have to like have a bit of headache selecting who to play and I think after that they will just you know begin to set my goals gradually because I, I don't just want to set something and I know personally okay this is to okay let's say I set a 20 goal target and I'm not starting most of the games it's it's not realistic yeah. so I have, to, I have to like um aim at starting 11 first then we'll see how it goes from there yeah and um, what are you expecting from the MLS? You know, new season, new league. What are you, what are you expecting to experience? You know, over the course of this season. I haven't really thought about that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just hoping to experience a better football than than the previous ones I've had before. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, and. Let me ask you about um, American culture so far. Yeah. You know, have have you found it easy? You know, adapting to the American way of way of life, or do you go out sometimes and you still find something a little bit strange? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that because I'm I adapt to like places quickly. Yeah, and it's not it's it's not so strange here because obviously they speak English, unlike um yeah. Europe. Like some European countries where it's difficult to, so it's it's easy to adapt here. It's easy to. I don't even know if they have a particular culture, but then I have, yeah, because everyone, you have people from different nationalities, and yeah, so when you're here, you have to when maybe you're around the Spaniards, you have to like, um, do a bit of their culture and all that, and when you're around Italians, blah blah blah, so it's it's just that way. I don't know. If Americans have a particular culture. Okay, how about the food? Because you're a professional footballer, you need to stay fit, you need to be healthy. And we know Americans, they love their unhealthy food. So, <laughs> is, it, is it easy for you to stay away from, from all that? Or do you sometimes just indulge every now and then? You mean their food? Yeah, you know, because, I mean, everywhere yeah. from fried something that they're selling, you know? I was I was asking my friend in Texas the other day. I said, um, right, what's what's um the, um the American dish like? What's their local food?" And he said, "Burger." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Really?" Anyways, um, it's mandatory to have um breakfast and lunch in the team. Okay, breakfast is not so mandatory, but lunch is mandatory, and you can. take Back home so mostly you just prepare dinner at home or you go out for a dinner or something so they kind of um, limit what you eat and um yeah obviously as a professional as well even if they don't do that you have to watch yeah you have to you have to watch what you eat you have to you know do a bit of everything and watch mm-hmm. what you eat. So, yeah. okay let me let me ask you but on 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 your cheat day if you had to eat something what would you eat has to be burger and fries because pizza is, is getting so boring these days. <laughs> oh, okay, burger and fries. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much talk about you know football life. I just wanted to catch up, you know, and look forward to the season. Now I want to ask you um, a few quick fire questions. So just don't think about too much. You know, the first thing that comes to your mind, let's just hear um, from you. Okay. okay. So first one, who's your favorite Nigerian player of all time? JJ Okocha. <laughs> your third footballer of all time from any country? Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, okay. Who's your third manager of all time? Ah. <laughs> Has to be Asen Wenger. Oh, okay. Um, what's your favorite thing to eat before a match? Rice. Rice. What we I get mostly so, but rice for me. Yeah. Okay. Who's your favorite superhero? Superhero? <laughs> Spider-Man. Okay. Do you have any hidden talents? <laughs> Not really. Maybe I dance silly. Maybe I, I dance. Dance, okay. Do you have any superstitions before a game? Apart from praying, no. Nothing. Oh. Okay. Who was your first ever celebrity crush? 
first ever I either can remember or I don't have any. <laughs> okay. Um, Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. You said Ronaldo already. Okay. Jollof rice or fried rice? Jollof. Nike or Adidas? Hmm. <laughs> Adidas is sponsor us here, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, shoes oh, or clothes? Nike. <laughs> okay. Shoes or clothes? Come again. Shoes or clothes? Shoes. Shoes. Champions League? Or African Cup of Nations? Champions. Champions League. Champions League. Okay, and then last one. Would you rather be the highest goal scorer and you lose in the World Cup final or you win the World Cup and you don't even play a single minute? <laughs> okay. Win, with, win the World Cup. I can always play the next one and play in clubs, so... Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, that's it. Those are my questions. Um let me see how long this took. We took only about twenty-four minutes. Um so I uh, that's that's all I have for you. Thank you very much for your time. Um okay, let me just add one more thing to this. Um so for your fans that are going to watch this, um Nigerian fans, American fans, fans from all over the world, you know, that are now that have been supporting you and are now supporting you in Chicago Fire. Um, what's your message to them ahead of the season? Uh, firstly, I want to say thank you to to them, to everyone who has been watching, supporting me. Those I know and those I don't know of. Um, big thank you. And um, going forward to the new season, um, guys, you just expect more of what I've shown. In my earlier career like my earlier seasons so i'm just i'm just going to show more so everyone should stay tuned and keep supporting all right thank you very much you know so for um for myself from everyone at ego tracker um of course we're wishing you the best we want to see you rise to the highest possible level you know and just keep on growing as a footballer thank you all right